Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Hey, it's uh, Lee Godbold over here at Junk Removal Authority. This thing's used right here. This is a 1946 Piper J3 Cub. This, this is what pilots back in the late 30s and 40s used to train in, 46 model right here. This thing's a lot of fun. It's used, what, has, what is that? That's uh, going on 80 years old, isn't it? 1946 model right there. Equipment like this, that's all right to be used. Your fun stuff's all right to be used. The stuff like back here, it's a brand new 2020 Mitsubishi FE180. We have a junk removal trucks for sale body on it. Uh, that, that, those are the bodies we build, brand new. This thing's gonna make us a bunch of money. Now, have we always had new vehicles? No, by no stretch of the imagination. Matter of fact, we've probably had more used vehicles the new ones. So I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. Um, I, Christian and myself founded Junk Doctors in uh, 2011, 2012, right in there. Uh, I was 20, 21, something like that. Christian was 19 or 20, two young guys, never borrowed a dime in our life, had absolutely no credit score. Uh, at the time, I was driving a 1991 Chevrolet 15, no I wasn't, I was in a 1993 Honda Accord. I ran it through my garage door. I used to live on top of a garage and uh, I was a hot rod, whatever, you know, I used to race cars and one evening I, I, I'd come flying in a driveway, I had a real long driveway, I'd come flying in and I didn't realize it, but it had rained and there was some leaves and the tires on my trucks, whereas now I keep, my, my tires are always in good shape now on these trucks as well as especially my you know, personal vehicles and all, they were, they were bald. And I hit that thing and slid right through the garage door. The front of the car was all scarred up from going through the garage door. Knowing, you know, I didn't have anything other than liability insurance and I wasn't gonna spend money on fixing a $1,500 car. So everything we'd ever done had been uh, used. So the first several trucks we bought, the first six trucks, uh, no, five of the first six trucks we bought were, were used trucks since then we bought one other used vehicle because we had waited too long to get another vehicle we got behind we got busy we went up to new jersey and picked up an old rust bucket things made us some money but uh it was, she's a rust bucket so uh ever since we went new for the most part though we've stayed new and there's great reason for it so i'm coming to you having had used vehicles and new vehicles having seen profit and loss statements on used vehicles and new vehicles having seen employee satisfaction from a used vehicle and from a new vehicle. I've seen all that. I wanna tell you why generally new is the way to go. In most cases, it beats it. Now, when might, when might a used vehicle be the way to go? Well, take Christian and myself when we first started. We first started up this company. We had no credit. We had very little money saved up. So we started out in a four pickup truck well, actually, it was uh, starting out in a Chevy 2500. But that was just me. That was back when I was doing jobs on my own, and I wrecked it trying to book a job. I pulled out in front of somebody and wrecked it, totaled it. So after that, we went with a $4,000 Ford F-150 pickup truck and uh, had about a $1,500 trailer, and that's what we did our junk hauling in. And that thing made us good money. So we were sitting there, Christian and I were going out and doing these jobs, hauling, um, no employees, you know, just ourselves, and we were putting away pretty good money. So we saved up a, an amazing, unreal amount of money to pay cash for our first used dump truck. That was in 2012. We saved up $11,500. We thought we were rich. We got that $11,500, we, $11, two 22, 21-year-olds, went out and bought our first dump truck, paid cash for it. We didn't have a choice. We couldn't finance. That one truck right there, had every single used purchase I'd ever made gone like that one truck had gone, this'd be a different video. This video, I'd be talking about why, why in the world would you ever buy a new vehicle? Because these used ones work out so well. That truck, we bought that thing with 100,000 miles. She's at like 360 now. We just put an engine on her, 380. We just put an engine on her. We're gonna put her back out there and, and work just out of sentimental reasons. Every other truck we would've gotten rid of at this point, but that one, truck old, old number one. That's been the best daggone truck ever. Made us a ton of money. Every single used vehicle I bought since then has get has been a maintenance headache, at least at some point. That truck 
it lasted as long as it was supposed to last. It lasted longer than it was supposed to last. The rest of them have given us issues from the, from the start, I mean, at different points. So the second truck we bought, we got that one out of Texas. It's a company called uh, Jump Be Gone, I believe, if I remember right, or Be Jump Free. It's called Be Jump Free. It was out of Austin, Texas, or Dallas, one of those other, others, I can't remember. Uh, one of the reasons I was attracted to that truck is it was already yellow. So I figured, she, I figured hell, we can get that thing down here and uh, put a half gallon of paint on it. She'd be ready to go. I don't have to prime, barely have to sand, just kind of have to scuff her up. She'll be good to go. So I had it delivered here. When I got it, the thing didn't sound, didn't sound perfect. You know, it, it, it sound, had a little weird noise come from the valve train, but hell, we had to have it. So we went ahead and took delivery of it. Within 20,000 miles, we were putting an engine on it. Cost about 10K to put an engine on it. We paid 20K for the machine, $10,000 engine. Shortly thereafter, a transmission went out. $6,000 transmission. Well, no, I stand correct. We put a junkyard trans in that one. So it was probably about 2,500 bucks counting labor. We stuck in that machine. Um, and uh, it's done all right. We just recently put another engine in it, uh, say like a year and a half ago um, to kind of keep things going. You know, keep it keep it rolling. It, it, we put several hundred thousand miles on it since then. So, um, it's made us some money, but we've spent a bunch. If you added everything up, we spent on maintenance on that vehicle. It'd have been what your truck payment would have been for a brand new machine. That's not counting rental payments. That's not counting downtime. That's not counting other factors we're going to discuss right now. Uh, every other used vehicle I've had since then, at some point in time, has had engine go out, transmission go out, um, and these junk trucks. If you're going to buy a, a junk truck, specific junk truck. You're gonna be in 25,000 minimum for a junk removal body truck. A used junk removal body truck with 150,000 miles, you're gonna be around 25,000. If you get the gas version, you might be at 22. And then you're gonna turn around and you're gonna put a lot of time, you know, a lot of money into it on the maintenance and the things. Before you know it, within a few years, you've got 40, you'll have $40,000, $45,000 in one of those trucks. And you could have gone new and you wouldn't have had the headaches and the, all that sort of stuff. So. There are certain times where you should buy new though, and that's if you don't have any credit. But you need to get credit built up. And um, you know, I'm somebody right now, we're going through right now, we're paying off a bunch of debt. Not, I say a bunch, we don't have a whole lot of debt. Comparatively, we, we really don't have much debt. We have vehicle loans, we have a few vehicle loans. And we're ha you know, we've had some good months and all, so we're starting to get a lot of that debt taken care of. But our debt to income ratios is low. I mean, it's, it's below, well below what your average small business is generally gonna have or your average business is gonna have, especially one of our size. So we're going through that, but you need to get a credit card, make some consistent payments on it. It's amazing, get a credit card, how quickly that uh, your credit will build up. And once you've been in business a couple years, you got a proven business, then you can go out and you can get something new like this. So those of you guys with no credit history, no business history, you don't have money saved up, you don't have any other income coming up, you don't have to go used. That's about the only time you should ever go used. The only other exception to that is if you're buying a backup truck and it's truly a backup. You've got four, five, six vehicles on the road. Most of those are new and uh, they're running them pretty consistent. Maybe you go out and buy a backup vehicle, but probably not. Cause most likely if you're running five or six vehicles, you're probably growing. So what's gonna happen? You're gonna get that used vehicle. You're gonna be putting it in service before you know it. And then you're gonna need another backup. You might as well just have bought new because that user is going to give you trouble time to time. So the main time is when you're brand new in business. That's the only time you should ever buy used. And that's only if you cannot, if you don't have the credit, the income or the cash, you know, down payment or whatever to go with a new vehicle. That's the only time you should be buying, not buying used. So let's talk about the other reasons a new vehicle is better than a, uh, a, a used one. So I mentioned maintenance costs already. Guys, about 5%, at one point, our worst year when we had all used vehicles and they'd gotten some mileage on it, you added it up, 5% of our income was being paid out on a uh, on one of those used vehicles. So let's, let's add that up. Your average junk removal vehicle, you can do a little more than this, but let's keep it simple. Let's say $300,000. Your average junk removal truck can bring you in $300,000 in a year, depending on where you're at and what you charge. All right, so 1%, of that, or 10% of that 300,000 would be 30,000, 1% would be 3,000 times that by five, 3,000 times five, so 5% five is $15,000. Guys, one of this, this truck right here, right here, over five years, payment on it gonna be about a, no money down, if you did no money down, payment would be about $1,000 a month. It's 
$12,000 right there. And we were consistently, for a couple years there, we had used vehicles, we were averaging 5% in maintenance. Otherwise, if you have a new vehicle, that number's gonna be around one, about around one to 2%. So it's about a wash when it comes to just the money going out the door, about a wash. All right, so then let's factor in the rental truck. Anytime one of these vehicles goes down, you're gonna do one of two things. One, you're gonna turn away work. Let's not do that. You don't ever wanna do that. You figure in the lifetime value and what you spent to get customers, you never, never do you wanna turn away work. So let's throw that out of the option. Throw that option out the door. All right, so the next thing what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to go to Penske, U-Haul, probably don't want to U-Haul, but Penske, you're gonna have to rent you a truck. Well, you add up those rental fees. If you gotta rent a truck for a week, cause I'm gonna tell you something, these trucks, they take a little while to fix. It might be down a week. Parts, you know, parts will add up, but you may think your downtime is gonna kill you. So you're gonna sit there and over that course of that week, you might put, you, that your rental fee for that week might be $1,200 for that vehicle. Could be, depending on how much you drive. It could be $1,200 for that vehicle. All right, then let's factor in this. That ain't a dump truck. That truck you're driving down the road to, uh, that you're renting, that truck is gonna be a tr box truck you're gonna have to hand unload. So what is, what's happening there? Where instead of doing five jobs, five good sized jobs in a day, you're gonna be doing three. You're missing out on two jobs income right there, or you guys are working a heck of a lot longer. And let's mention that, they're, they're gonna have to, it's gonna take them much longer to hand unload that box truck than to dump. Your labor costs are going to go up. So now, now you're starting to pass from a monetary standpoint, straight monetary standpoint, you're exceeding the cost of that payment for that new vehicle. All right, let's look at the next thing. Your employees. This thing right here, employees fight to drive our newest vehicles. They compete to drive our newest vehicles. The brand new guys, the guys that are just starting, the guys that aren't performing, we'll stick them in a few of our older vehicles. We've made it a priority to turn our fleet over within the next two years, have all new vehicles within the next two years. We still got a few old ones. The new guys are gonna be in the in the old vehicles. They ain't gonna be in, they, they're not gonna be in the new ones. And the reason for that is, is comfortability. The air conditioner works better, drives better, it's cleaner, they feel better in it. It's more reliable. They're not, they're not having to worry about breaking down the day getting ruined and their evening getting extended and their, their time off getting extended or whatever because the truck breaks down and they got to Uber back to the shop. They got to tow the truck. Then they got to go take care of the jobs. They ain't having to do all that. From a rental truck standpoint, guys, when they're in a rental truck and they're having to hand unload, your employee satisfaction goes down, especially in the middle of summer. And when do your trucks break down? Right in the middle of summer when it's hot outside, when you're busy, when you're running them nonstop. That's when those trucks break down. So your employee satisfaction is much, much higher with a new vehicle. No question about it. So downtime unpredictability those are two anim those are two enemies in your business downtime and unpredictability the best thing in the world the best most valuable businesses in the world have predictable income month in and month out as soon as you throw in with used vehicles if you have a used fleet the only thing predictable is, is it's going to be unpredictable you're going your shit's going to break down you know fairly often that's that's the one thing you know these new vehicles rarely if ever do you have to do anything to them that isn't caused by a human operator error Rarely, 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 if ever. It happens that they're on a warranty. Rarely, if ever, do you ever have to do anything with them. Extremely predictable, makes running your business easy. And uh, the downtime, guys, that downtime kills you. If you guys are missing out on work, that's killing you as well. So that is two enemies of the junk removal business. That's gonna keep you from scaling and growing a large company like you'd like. And hey, look at this truck. You talk about professional looking. Look at this thing, look at this. This paint, it's starting to rain out here on me. This paint right here, that right there, that's glossy, man. That thing shines. That thing screams professionalism. Screams professionalism going down the road. You're in an old truck or whatever, old beat up truck, the paint ain't in great shape. Graphics ain't in great shape, ain't looking fresh. That's hurting you guys, that's hurting you, I'm telling you. It's, it's for sure hurting you. So, these gas trucks you get, these gas Isuzu's or Mitsubishi's. Keep these, baby, going to, go in the little side room in here, a little quieter. Keep these gas trucks um, about five years. Plan on keeping them five years. It's gonna be about 200,000 miles you're gonna drive on that truck. That's about as, what they're good for. 
trade that thing in, get you a new one. These bodies, if you go to junk removal trucks for sale.com, these bodies right here, they'll last you. Generally, if you take care of it, you're gonna be able to switch that over to another chassis too. So you get a good chassis, you get a new chassis, that's the stuff that breaks down on the bodies themselves, especially this, because we, we got some premium paint on it and uh, there's some ways we've constructed it, which should help out on the rust issue, which can be an issue with some of these junk removal bodies. That thing is gonna last right there. You can shift it over. So the chassis on this truck's about 40,000, 42,000. The body on this particular one, about 18,000. So you're right about 60,000 on a truck. You can get this, this is the FE-180, you can get the FE-160 or even the 140, 140 is a little light, but uh, that'll save you some money on the chassis. But next time around, you sit there and you get a $40,000 chassis, you pay somebody $5,000 to switch your body over and you got a brand new truck at 45 once you've uh, gotten that new body already. This body should be good for about 10 years as a general rule. So uh, the professionalism, you're just not going to beat. There's no, uh, no doubt about it. So here's the thing to remember guys, one way or the other, you're gonna pay somebody. You're gonna pay, you're gonna pay the repair man or you're gonna pay the bank, unless you got the cash money to buy, buy a new one cash. You're gonna pay the repair man or you're gonna repair the bank. The problem is when you pay the repair man, you're also having to pay the rental truck company and your employees ain't as happy. Your, your trucks are down, you're missing out on jobs because you can't do as many. You're getting stressed because you have to work a lot longer hours. It's just not an extremely good deal. So one thing, any anytime I do anything in business, I ask myself, what the heck is the worst case scenario? What could happen? If I spend my money on this, what's the worst case scenario and can I live with it? Guys, here's the deal, here's the deal. This truck right here, the only way this deal ain't gonna work out is if you're slow. If you pick a bad market, if you're not a great operator, um, that's, that's pretty much it. So that's the only time that deal is gonna be slow. Well, if that truck's sitting around, if it's sitting around, it's, hold, it's holding value. This truck right here, it'll lose a little bit of value when it leaves a lot, but these junk removal bodies, they're in such demand, they hold their value like crazy. So let's say you get this truck right here. Let's just use this around $60,000 number. Pay $60,000 for it. Let's add in some tax, tags, title, whatever. So 60, say 62, 63,000. All right, your, your business is slow. You only wind up putting 10,000 miles on this thing. When you come around to set, if you decide you're just gonna give up on the junk removal business, you're not gonna worry with it anymore, you just wanna get out, you turn around and sell this vehicle, it's gonna be worth about 55. Even with 10,000 miles on it, you're gonna be able to put that thing on the market, just because it's sitting there ready, it's gonna be worth about $55,000. So your worst case scenario is you lose, what is that, 8K? Your worst case scenario is you lose 8K, you have a brand new vehicle, and you look great, you're proud of it, that's a heck of a winning move. That vehicle is not going to go down in value. And guys, junk removal, it's recession resistant. It is recession resistant. Some areas in the country actually pick up during a recession. We had a video about that the other day. So if you buy this thing and the, and the business goes south, COVID returns or whatever, and the economy tanks, but it doesn't recover as much out of this, there will be demand for junk removal. This truck, you're still going to be able to use. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. You're still going to be able to use that truck. And let me tell you one more thing. Something that took me a little while to realize and there's gonna be people that don't agree with this. There ain't no doubt about it, but debt motivates. Dave Ramsey would not be happy with me saying this. I like Dave, I listen to Dave quite often. He is right on most things, but debt is a motivating factor on a small business. When you know you got a debt payment to make, you're gonna find ways to keep this truck busy. You're gonna find ways to be profitable. You're gonna make sure you're gonna charge enough to make those debt payments and keep that amount of money. And what happens is that's teachable. So otherwise, like when we had some used vehicles, I always wanted to be successful. I'm a very self-driven person. I dr I'm driven, driven, driven. But occasionally I wake up in the morning, back when I was debt free or whatever, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be like, I just sit in today. I'll just, I'm just gonna sleep in today. I'm not gonna go out there and try and drive, drive up some business. I'm just gonna sleep in. It's raining outside. Who wants to go to work, you know, right now? Uh, I got no pressure, man. I got no pressure. So the same exact reason that people like being debt free, it can actually be a negative. You got no pressure. Here's what I do know though, guys, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get that debt payment. You're gonna feel that pressure. You're gonna make those payments. You're gonna build your business. You're gonna build something absolutely phenomenal. You're gonna make great money. You might go out and sell that business. Here's what happens though. At some point you're gonna become debt free. Right now we get all this debt paid off. We get what debt we pay off. I know we have two or three trucks we're making payments on. We got get that paid off. We're gonna be just as driven as before. We've learned, we've built that muscle to be driven. 
that muscle has been built up to be driven. It's not gonna go away. But the thing is though, just much like you can't build a muscle without going to the gym, that debt payment is like the gym when it comes to building up that muscle, that hard work muscle that keeps you out there every single day. It contributes to it. I'm telling you, it is a great motivating factor. If you guys are interested in trucks, junkremovaltrucksforsale.com, check it out. We'd be happy to help. This video, I've made a similar video in the past, guys, well before we, we were selling trucks. Believe it 100%, I've seen it in my business. A new truck is 100% the way to go. We're coming out of COVID right now. Pinup demand's out there, it's picking up. Junk removal businesses are busy as ever. We got customers, we've got customers having record months. Give us a call, we wanna help you have a record month. If you need a truck, just let us know as well. We can hook you up, 919-617-1975. JunkRA.com, that's for Junk Removal Authority, JunkRA.com. You guys need Google Ads Management, SEO, websites, uh, contact center. You guys gonna be blowing up, especially if you're using a marketing service. You'll be blowing up here in a few months. You want a contact center where you can have freedom in your life. You can truly own your business instead of your business owning you. Guys, it's been Lee Godbold, Junk Removal Authority, super excited. Uh, as we're coming out of this, this country's firing up, this economy's firing up, and we got a lot of great things going on. Really appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch everybody real soon. Thanks.